Ladies and gentlemen, it's a new season, and welcome to the 1988 season for Sunday Night Lights. In this video, I will preview all silly season moves, schedules, and who to look out for this season. To start things off, I will unveil the 1988 NASCAR, Bush, and Winston Cup schedules. So let's start with the Bush Series. Some of the new changes include the Bush Series now racing at the Illinois State Fairgrounds, and a new road course date as the Bush Series heads west to the newly reconfigured Riverside. That will also make a return to the Cup schedule. Other new tracks that will debut this season will be Nazareth Speedway in Pennsylvania and Louisville Motor Speedway in the Bluegrass State of Kentucky. Next, we got the Winston Cup Series schedule. Riverside does retain one date on the schedule and its other date has been replaced by a new track out in Arizona. Phoenix International Speedway will be making its debut this season. There isn't much to report except Sam Ard returns to the double zero for another season, hoping to score some wins to help root himself to a second championship. He is also bought into Howard Thomas's team and will be fielding a second car with the number 5 for Larry Pollard. Larry Pearson is back in the number 21, also looking for a second title. Grant Adcox will drive the full season in Bush for Danny Marshall's team. Danny Marshall has hinted in making part-time starts in a second car. We'll have to wait and see. Richie Evans has decided to give the Bush Series title a shot. He will field his own car with a number 61 orange car sponsored by Sunny Delight. Jimmy Hensley is at his family operation in the 63 Days in Car. Jeff Hensley has stepped out of the car and will help his brother out at the team. Morgan Shepard will move to Haas Ellingson's number one car. Originally, the team was going to go back down to part-time, but was able to secure sponsorship from Mobile One for Morgan Shepard, and they will run the full season. Brett Bodine will take over the number 26 Quaker State ride, replacing Shepard. Mark Martin is back in the 15 for Bud Moore. Ken Schrader returns to Judy Dunleavy's number 90, keeping the Red Baron sponsorship. Lake Speed will run full-time in Danny Marshall's Cup car in the 85. With that being said, Terry Shudiver, last year's Rookie of the Year, will return to Lake Speed's number 83 Oldsmobile. And as for Jack Roush's new team with Mark Martin over at fellow 14 Budmore Engineering, who's in the 6? The answer is probably one of the best known names to ever be in racing. Ladies and gentlemen, the driver of the number 6 Strolls Light Ford for Roush Racing, Dick Trickle. He will run for Rookie of the Year against Ernie Irvin, who will be driving the number 2 for US Racing. Rick Baldwin, who never got in a coma, will split some races in the 67 with Buddy Arrington for 1988. Terry Labonte enters the season as the defending champion with a season to remember in the number 17 tied Chevrolet at Hendrick Motorsports. He will be chasing championship number 3 in 1988. Dale Earnhardt was not too thrilled that he had the championship slip away from him and he is 110% ready for a championship season this season. Davey Allison had a season from hell in 1987. The question is, can he rebound in his third full-time season and get in victory lane? Speaking of victory lane, Rusty Wallace and Ken Schrader are a couple guys that came close to their first career wins in 1987. These will be a couple guys to keep their eyes on for 1988. Richard Petty had a late career resurgence in 1987, picking up two big wins, he will be one to watch this season to see if he can continue that. And lastly, Bobby Allison does not have his career ending crash in Pocono and will continue to race beyond then. The same goes for Jocko Majacomo. The wreck he had with Allison caused him to retire after 1988. He will continue racing as well after this season. Oh, I forgot. So I'm adding in one last quick thing. I totally forgot to bring it up. Obviously, I want to talk about the Tim Richmond situation. Again, we have a plan for Tim Richmond. But Tim Richmond is not ready to come back just yet. He is still in rehab, and he just didn't feel comfortable coming back. So he is still keeping in touch with Rick Hendrick and working very closely with him. And when Richmond is ready, he will be back. I promise, he will be. And he will be back stronger than ever before. For the time being, however, this leaves the door open for Jimmy Means. Jimmy Means has been re-signed to Rick Hendrick's team 
for 1988. He will be back in the number 52 Folger Chevrolet, and Rick Hendrick has allowed him to keep his number 52 in case he wanted to go back to his own team at some point. He is willing to take that number with him. So with that being said, once again, Jimmy Means is back at Hendrick in the 52 that used to be the number 25. So stay tuned for when Tim Richmond does return. With all that out of the way, now on to the 1988 Bush Clash at Daytona. 15 drivers are entered in this race for a quick 20 lap dash for bragging rights. This race consists of pole winners from 1987 and past winners of the Clash. Kyle Petty and Lake Speed are on the front row as we kick off Speed Weeks. Dale Earnhardt looks like the new man in black in that new number 3 GM Goodrun Chevrolet, quickly taking the lead as they complete lap 1, and as a side note, there are a few races this year he will still drive the Wrangler car. One lap later, Jeff Bodine takes the lead from Earnhardt. Then lap 3, it's Rusty Wallace's turn to be out in front. There is no time to be wasted, this race is only 20 laps long. Lap 5, back comes Kyle Petty to come take the lead with Ricky Rudd in second. Then coming to lap six, Ricky Rudd in that 88 Gatorade Chevrolet takes the lead. Lap seven, Kyle Petty takes the lead back and he is taking off for now. The merry-go-round continues and Jeff Bodine leads on lap eight. Here comes Dale Earnhardt as he and Buddy Baker blessed by Bodine coming to lap nine. I'm sure Earnhardt will be keeping Bodine behind him at all costs. Lap 10, Buddy Baker gets a huge push from Bill Elliott to take the lead from Dale Earnhardt. On lap 11 off of turn 4, Rusty Wallace checks up and gets into Ken Schrader and he goes spinning. Wallace keeps going, but the caution does not come out. Meanwhile, Earnhardt takes the lead from Bodine on lap 12. And by lap 14, Bill Elliott, last year's Clash winner, is leading, but Buddy Baker makes a run on the outside to take the lead. Six laps to go, Elliott takes the lead back with Earnhardt following suit, and Earnhardt steals the lead immediately. Four laps to go, back comes Bill Elliott and he takes the lead going down the back stretch. Then with three to go, Dale Earnhardt comes charging back on the outside and battles with Elliott. Going into turn one, Elliott manages to keep the lead. Two laps to go, a three car battle between Elliott, Earnhardt and Baker. Earnhardt takes the lead going into turn one and coming to the white flag, here comes Buddy Baker. He takes the lead from Earnhardt and Baker is trying to hold him off into turns 3 and 4. Does Earnhardt have anything? The answer is no. Buddy Baker will win the 1988 Clash at Daytona. How about Buddy Baker? That guy has still got it, and he is going to be a threat on Super Speedway tracks for sure this season. As we take a look at the final results of the Clash from Daytona, thank you guys so much for watching this preview video. Coming up next will be the 1988 Bush Series season. I will be starting on that very shortly. I do apologize that it took me a little time to get this video out. I wanted to take a little small break to avoid any possible burnout. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Another fun, exciting season is ahead of us. So stay tuned for the Bush Series and eventually the IROC and Cup Series for 1988. And as I probably said it for the third time already, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm SonicRules831, and I will see you in the next video.